You're in a good place now. Relax, breathe, smile. You've entered into your element, the home of origin, the home of intelligence and beauty, where relevant topics are discussed, where what you think counts, and where superior is the norm. You are listening to Perspectives with Ashley Burgess. Welcome back live to Perspectives, and I'm your host, Ashley Burgess. You know, tonight we're talking, why is it that we find ourselves in romantic relationships with narcissistic, selfish, even mentally unbalanced jerks? You know, we're talking about this from both a male and a female perspective, because like anything, it's a well-balanced situation. I know that there's a lot of men out there that seem to find themselves with women that seem to be unbalanced and seem to be narcissistic. Even more so. Ha, ha, ha. Cute. Aren't they all? No, Aren't they? Are they all? Oh. Oh. And for women out there that seem to find the most narcissistic jerk in the room to deal with and to begin to wonder what their text messaging mean and when they're going to see them next. It's a big deal, right? Yes. The romance factor. So why is that? You know, why do we seem to find ourselves in these relationships? And why do you find yourself in relationships that seem to be not working? Why is it that you seem to be found like the biggest jerk out there? Why is that? And I think a lot of times it goes back to the concept of meeting. When you meet somebody and you're wanting a relationship, it's like going to that interview. Remember that first or second or third interview that you went to that they asked you all the questions and you answered it all spot on. You know, you're like, I know I got it. And instead of asking them any questions, you went home praying that you got the job. And all of a sudden, a few days later, you get the call and they go, can you come back in? You come back in and you've gotten the job. But the problem is, is that later on down the road, you realize you didn't want this job. This is not a good fit. You should have asked some questions. You have no idea what was going on. The, the price structure is not good. The corporate culture is awful. And you don't like anybody you're working with. But she didn't ask any of those questions, so you didn't know. You know, it's the same thing with a relationship. You get involved with a relationship, you don't ask a lot of questions, because why? Because you like the idea of being in a relationship. I, I was just about to say, it, uh, we're in love with being in lo- the idea of being in love. And so we don't want to ask too many questions, right. because if we ask too many questions, we might see through something. It might not be real. Let's just take it for face value and just see what happens. And I remember there's a lot of films out there that I really love, and The Wedding Singer is one of them. And it's funny that he tries to get married to his sweetheart, and she ends up leaving him, you know, she leaves him. She doesn't show up to the wedding. She leaves him there at the aisle waiting on her. And later on, you know, she said, you know, I was in, I was in love with your idea. I was in love with who you were 10 years ago in this band and all this stuff. And he's like, yeah, I wish I knew that yesterday. But at the same time, he was with her with blinders on because he just wanted to get married. He just wanted to get married. He just wanted to find somebody to live with. It wasn't necessarily that she was the right person. It was just she was the one there. Right. And I know a lot of people listening tonight, especially single or even previously divorced, know what I'm talking about because it seems that a lot of times the only reason we get ourselves into these situations is because we don't ask a lot of questions. We pray that they're going to end up being God's gift to us. And we hope that we actually finally have the chance that this whole city is not ra- just ramshack with a bunch of narcissistic jerks. And then we found the one gold nugget that's there. We've looked high and low, and we found them at the bar. And so we start dating that person, and all of a sudden things start coming out, right? Things start coming out. Things start pouring out. The texting, the concepts, the ag- the, the arguments, or even more so the silence. Mm. And that's even worse. Right. Because you don't have a clue what they're thinking. Well, what do you think they're thinking? Well, why haven't they called me? It's been two days. I haven't heard from them. And this is even if you have had sex or you haven't. I'm not just talking about giving it up early. I'm talking about some people play a game with you. And you find yourself playing this game back to get attention. You find yourself playing this game back because it's the only way that this person will respond. And I want to give an example right now because this has actually personally happened to me. And for everybody listening to this show, you know that I've been married for a long time. However, I do have friends in my life that I have previously dated. And we don't hang out that much, but occasionally we do. And it's interesting how sometimes, even though we're just friends, I feel like they're still playing a game. For example, the other day I got a call from one of my friends, and they called and they left a message, and I called them right back. I was in a meeting, and it went directly to voicemail, like without ringing. So I was like, okay, they must be on the phone. I'll try them again. So I try them again directly to voicemail. I left a message. The next day I texted I left you a message. I hope everything's good. How are you doing? No response. 
Finally, toward the end of the day, I get a text saying, oh, yeah, I can't meet you. I have this, this, and that. I'll see you later, okay? And then I realize we're still friends, but they're playing a game with me like they do with whoever they're dating, okay? Uh In an odd way, I realize, okay, this is the way that you get attention. And so I just sent some random photo of, like, some spot in, in, in a city that I'm at. And I sent her some random photo, and I said, hey, this is my spot. And I get, a, I get a text the very next day going, why did you send me this photo, and what does it mean? I didn't respond. <laughs> so you can play that game. <laughs> the next day, I wrote the word howdy in a text, and I sent it. Immediately after that, they text me back and go, hey, what did that picture mean? Do you, what was that what you took the picture of, and what is it, and what, what's going on? I didn't respond. The next day, I texted and I said, I'll have to call you eventually and tell you about my adventures. Have a great weekend. Immediate text. Oh, what, what adventures? Where are you going? Where are you at? Uh, well, are you out of town? or, or, or who, What are you doing? I didn't respond. <laughs> okay, do you see where I'm going with this? Yes. I mean, and I can feel now that this is all a game. Like, this is insane. I don't want to play games with my friends, and I can only imagine how it feels for people that are dating that are getting to deal with this type of game playing on a daily basis. You want to be authentic. You want to be honest. You want to return calls. But if you do, what happens? They don't accept it. So what does that mean? How do we get ourselves involved with these narcissistic cats that really don't give a crap about us, and instead we end up falling into the trap of playing the game to get their attention? I mean, have you been there before, Bill? Excuse me. Uh, actually, I was about to say no. I, I, uh, while you were telling that story, I was trying to think of you know my past uh, you know relationship I- examples. Um, as far as being involved with someone who's narcissistic, who has to be the center of attention, and and uh, you know it makes me uh, you know go out of my way to you know, shower attention upon them. Not in that sense. Well, see, uh, actually, I'm even talking about even the opposite is that the more attention you shower on some of these people, the more they run. So they almost want you to ignore them. Oh, I, I see what you mean. Well, well, definitely the, the answer is no in my case, because uh, uh, in, in my case, if somebody wants to run, I'll just let them run. Yeah, you've had enough of that. Yeah, I mean, because I'm, here's it, I, I'm I will admit I'm in the minority of, uh, you know, the, the dating types. I just I'm just not going to pursue very hard. And I, cool. I, I, you know, I am just so anti drama. I I don't like playing games and never have. Um, I've never been good at it, uh, for one thing. So even if I wanted to play games, I wouldn't be very good at it. Um, and so uh, so I I just tend to say, okay, well, if you want to play that game, you know, nice knowing you. And I, and I love so. I love that rationale because that's coming from an authentic place. It's also coming from a place that you're not going to let somebody else play you. That's uh, that. Yeah, the, uh, I mean, I I will admit, uh, and and I've I've uh, explained this on previous episodes. There was one relationship I had where I kind of got sucked into kind of a toxic relationship, and uh, you know, I basically got played, you know, like a Stradivarius. Uh, with that one exception, uh, I've I've usually been pretty good at okay, you know what? Not into the drama, not into the playing games. It was nice knowing you. Good good, good luck and Godspeed. And I think there's a lot of people out there that can relate to that, Bill, because a lot of people are very powerful or very smart people. But when that one person comes around, that one person, in your case, that one particular woman that came around and turned your world upside down. Yeah. And and I can give a really good example to everybody listening tonight because I've used this before in my own practice. And it's something that I came up with because I've been there. When you're with certain people in life, you feel like you you love it. It's like all these emotions and the feeling of a rush and all this high, and it's just so amazing. And then you get around them, and over time, though, it feels so, like, almost disjointing. Like, you get it. It's almost like you're inside of a blender. They put you in. They put the cover on the blender. They blend you up, right? And then they throw you out of the blender. And the throw out of the blender means the date's over. It's the following day you don't hear from them. No matter what you text or what you call, you're not going to hear from them, okay? It might be a week until they decide to respond to you. Right. And it can be very overwhelming because you don't even understand because you thought, okay, well, we had such a good time. Why aren't they calling you? But this is a game. And, you know, when I when I met my husband, we didn't ever play these games. I mean... Which is probably what attracted you to him. Yeah. Because you were used to uh, the, the other way around, weren't you? Well, the only game plan that I've ever really had was with two 
particular people in my life. And the first person, actually, when I first met them, this is how this is how hardcore the games were back then. Okay, I had just graduated high school. I was in college, and I was kind of dating somebody. Well, I was really dating somebody, and I actually ran into somebody at a club when we were out at this club. And my boyfriend went off doing his thing, and this guy came up to me, and he was like, hey, would you like to buy? Would you like me to buy you a drink? And I was like, I'm fine. He's like, no, really. He's like, uh, my friend finds you attractive. Uh. And I said, really? And he goes right up there, and he points to this guy, and I go, oh. And I thought this guy was attractive, you know, and he was just like, and I kind of looked at him. He's like, oh, don't worry about me. I'm gay. Oh, I've heard you tell us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I okay, go, okay, what? Go ahead, and he's ahead. like, I'm gay. And I go, you're, you're gay? And he's like, yeah. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. And he, like, dressed well, and he was, like, good-looking guy. He looked like Harry Connick Jr. I was like, okay, <laughs> this is good. You know, and we started hanging out. Like, we started having, like, girl dates, you know, where we went and had, like, brunches. And then we went to the museum, and then we had a picnic lunch, and then we went to the mall. And we started doing this, and I started confiding into this person about all this stuff. This is a big-time game player right here, okay? And then the next thing you know... We ended up going on a date. I broke up with my boyfriend, and then that was history. And I it was I had moved in for a few days, a few weeks. I was moving into another apartment. And, you know, we slept together, and the next thing you know, there we are dating. And I was like, I thought you were gay. He goes, it was all a ruse to get you in bed. And it worked. And it worked. And he goes, and see, you're at my house now. You're living yes. here. You were the fish, and he got you on the reel. I know. And there I was all <laughs> Just thinking. real GN. See? See that? Yep. And there are games being played on a constant basis in the dating scene. And yeah, and I kind of let myself get played on that one. And so for everybody that's listening tonight, if you're do, are you, if you're resisting the fact, if you don't want to waste any more of your time, if you are not looking to waste time in your life and you're looking to find somebody that you can have a relationship with, you have to continue to listen to the show tonight because there's no way that you're going to stop wasting time if you don't hear what I have to say. Because honestly, when we deal with narcissistic type jerk people that are playing games, you're always going to waste your time. You're going to be completely out of sync. You're not going to find the right person to date. And you're going to have those blinders on because you want a relationship so bad that you're not really thinking, is this person actually a good choice for me? You're not even thinking about that because you just want to get married or you just want to be in a relationship. So stay tuned because when we return, we'll be talking more about how to find a good relationship and how to deal with the fact that sometimes we find ourselves in unbalanced and narcissistic relationships. Perspectives with your host, me, Ashley Burgess. We'll be back in. We'll be back in two shakes. Turn it up and jump in the deep end on Perspectives with Ashley Burgess. The water's warm and there's a swim up bar. Glass of perspective, anyone? Now, here's Ashley. Welcome back live to Perspectives, and I'm your host, Ashley Burgess. You know, we're talking about tonight why we find ourselves in romantic relationships that are narcissistic, selfish, or we're dealing with mentally unbalanced jerks. I know a lot of times that happens in life where you meet somebody and you just think, oh, this is going to be the greatest relationship ever. Oh, my God. I love this person. Oh, my God. I'm so glad we met. And they turn out to be the most narcissistic, lying sack of jerk. Honestly. And it's like, you're like, how did I get myself into this relationship? Uh, Bleep and bleep and bleep, bleep, bleep. Yes, and another bleep. Too. And another bleep. And every <laughs> and, and another bleep for every extra month that you spend with that person. <laughs> right. Because it's a waste of our time. It's a waste of your time. You don't have all your life to go find someone and being out of sync with the wrong person. What if you're missing Mr. Right or Mrs. Right? So, you know, I think the biggest reason why we end up in these relationships is because we like the idea of a relationship, not necessarily the person. Okay, so let's take those blinders off the I want a relationship real bad blinders and look at people for who they are. And that's the first step. And that's like going into a job interview. You don't go into a job interview if you've had jobs before. You don't go into the job interview and let them tell you everything and ask you all these questions and you don't ask anything. You don't. You'll end up in a bad situation that way. Okay, you have to ask questions, too. You have to interview them as well. Same goes for when you meet somebody. Ask questions. Get to know them. Because there's no there's no harm, no foul in finding out a little bit more about John or Mary. It's not a problem. You can ask them. And guess what? You have little invested at this time. A lot less invested than in a month or six months or a year. Okay? So let's talk about that. So first off, you want to get past the concept of wanting a relationship and actually analyzing the people that you're around. Not overanalyzing 
analyzing. You know, next is that I think sometimes we subconsciously sabotage ourselves and we don't pick the good people because we actually don't want to necessarily find that relationship, right? Okay. If we don't really want to get tied down, but we like actually dating, but we subconsciously don't realize that we're not really ready yet to settle down, we might continue to pick the wrong people. A lot of times with women that come into my practice, the biggest thing that I find is that there's a lot of women out there that like dating married men. And I have never understood. In fact, my girlfriend and I recently watched a TV movie uh, where that was one of the central themes. I mean, it, it was focused around these three women. And it was like they, they kept having relationships with married men and having kids and all that good stuff and, and wondering why bad things happened to them. Yeah, because things are going to flow well. And, and, of course, you know, she, she just loved it. And I'm sitting there going, get, why? <laughs> why do you like this, you yeah. know? And I have some friends that actually fall into that category, and I have some clients that will get out of one relationship that they've had with a married man for – these relationships go on for a long time. Because the thing is that it's not when, – when you're when you are having relations with a married person – Okay, this is just FYI. This is for everybody tonight. This is the straight-up gospel truth. You're only seeing a certain side of them, okay? You're seeing a mysterious, adventurous side of them. It's very appealing. It's very interesting, okay? It's very sultry. It's very um, fun and exciting, okay? Because you're getting this glimpse. However, if you were to see the full enchilada... And I'm not making reference to any sexual part. I, I, was, I was about to say, this is a family show, so, you know, If you're be not careful. seeing the full enchilada, <laughs> you are missing it. And it would be awesome if you could just open up some sort of window and see him with his wife and kids. Would you still want to date that? Would that still be attractive to you? Okay? I mean, seriously. I was on the plane a few days ago. And I'm sitting there, and I'm, in, I'm sitting in 1A, and the guy that's sitting in 1B... Um, he was with his family, and they were. He was obviously um, from a foreign country. He was from a different country. He looked like young Julio Iglesias, okay, gotcha. like a really good looking Latino man, okay, okay, or you know. And and his wife was there, and they had two kids. And it was interesting to just watch it because it was cool because I didn't even have to listen to them talk because they didn't speak English, right? So they were, you know, so, but the cool thing is that I was be able to watch mannerisms and body language a lot better that way. So I watched this whole thing and it was like right before we took off, you know, the wife's turned around and she's kind of like sleeping a little bit or whatever because it took us forever to take off because of some sort of malfunction. And I see him with his phone and he's like, like has the phone kind of off to the left side hiding it. Okay. And you can see him going through his text messages and as he kind of slinks back into the chair and he kind of puts this book from his right hand like on the other side of the the phone. So he's hiding the phone. So the only person I can see the phone is him and me. Okay, that's it. Because he doesn't think that I'm looking. He's not even paying attention to me. I'm not his wife. Okay. (laughs) And you can tell that he was texting somebody that probably his wife doesn't know about. Okay. Well, that I would question. But anyway, so, so I mean, she, she's oblivious to all this, apparently. Oh, well, yeah. She didn't even see it. And the point is, is that think about it. Like, the whole mysterious, interesting game, or the, the whole married interesting game is interesting, except for when you see the husband over there with his wife picking his nose. You know what I mean? It's like, it's, <laughs> it's, all, it's all fun and game. Scratching in his butt, you know? Seriously. I mean, it's like, and so I have clients that come in and they'll dump or they'll get rid of, or they'll be dumped by the married man. And then the next thing you know, two months later, they enter another relationship with a married you know, guy. And, and I was, uh, you know, just real quickly, Ashley, uh, d- d- just to t- take just a minute. I don't understand. Why do women get involved with married men in the first place? I don't get it. Okay, there's several reasons. One, okay, besides the fact of of needing food and shelter, and st- if, there, if there's a reason for monetary issues, that's one thing. Because sometimes they'll take care of them. So it's okay. a rich guy, okay. The second thing, though, is that even if it's rich or not rich, women that normally get involved with a married man either think, one, that they can change him and make them leave their wife, okay? Two, the man has told them in sexual acts, throughout the sexual act, I love you more than my wife, I'm going to leave her, and led them on. Okay. Or three, they subconsciously are actually sabotaging themselves because they don't want to get into a relationship. So they know that this person is unattainable because they're married. 
And that's normally what it is. If the person really doesn't want to have a full-on marriage. They want to have the sex and they want to have some parts of a relationship. That's why they choose it. Sadly enough is that mm. a lot of times that changes. A lot of times that changes. And it becomes an argument and a problem because when the when the man goes back home to be with his wife, normally the other person gets angry and starts resenting the fact that they have to share and I've seen things, I've seen stuff where people come into my office and, um, you know, she get, the girl gets pregnant. And he's got a wife and kids. And that's normally the telltale sign of what happens when the, when the, when the crap hits the fan, okay? Because that's like, oh my God, now I'm going to have to come clean with my wife and tell her what's going on because now you're pregnant. And that normally is a good sign of how much they really care. Right. Because they want to run back as fast as they can and go, oh my God, I can't believe I screwed up this bad. OK, I cannot believe this. And, and, you know, so FYI, for all those men, for all those men out there having sex with women and you're married, birth control, first off. <laughs> but second, why is that? And why is the one? Why do women want to get involved with married men as well as why do men want to get involved with married women? Right. Because, yeah, because because it happens the other way around, too. It does. And so if it's the sex thing and you know that it's not a relationship, that's one thing. But if you're actually setting yourself up for failure and knowing that you're going to fall in love with this person, this is going to hurt. It's going to hurt really bad. Because I'll tell you one other thing, too, is that when a person's married and they have an affair with somebody else, and I've seen this in my practice as well, is that... They normally don't leave them for the person they're having the affair with. So if the marriage gets broken up, they're normally not going to go with the person they were having an affair with. They're going to break ties with everything that was going on in their life at that time, and they're going to move on. And I know we've talked about this on previous show, Bill, where you know when, when that happens, usually the person that's getting a divorce does, wants nothing to do with what was going on around them at right. the time when they had to get a divorce. Right, right. And so that's kind of like the rebound. So they, they move past all that, and they start a new life. Well, you referenced the... Uh previous episodes and i i think we had in this segment we have just enough time for a shameless plug uh so if i wanted to listen to previous episodes so ashley uh, where would i go you could go to ashleyburgess.com you could go to spreaker you could go to itunes that's very awesome yeah and, and listen to what two i think we're up to 206 wow previous episodes of perspectives with ashley burgess and now ends our shameless plug segment your own perspective. Beautiful plug. Beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> so when we're subconsciously trying to sabotage ourselves, you usually pick the wrong people. Whether they're married or single, it doesn't matter. But if they're narcissistic and they're jerks and they actually play games with you and they push your buttons and they push you to an emotional limit and they cause stress in your life, that's not somebody that you want to be with. I mean, life is hard enough sometimes without needing excess stress from somebody else is trying to push all your buttons. You know, going back to that example that I, sh- that I was talking about with my friend, we're not dating, I'm married, but they're still playing games with their friend. I mean, I can only imagine how that person reacts to other people in their, in their dating life. Yeah. Oh, my God. I mean, that must be painful. It must be agony. I mean, just to think about how that would be to deal with them, I don't even want to think it gives me a headache. I mean, I know people like that, like the way that they respond back or they won't even respond or they do like the seven day response. I'll, re- I'll respond in seven days. You know what I mean? And it's just like, really? You're actually timing out when you're going to respond. And so playing into these games is like the first time in the first way that you realize that there's games being played. I think the best thing to do is to call people on the carpet on it, see if they can get over it. If they can't, then you know what? They're emotionally unable to be there, and they're playing a game that's not worth it. It's just not worth it. Because if you continue to stay in this game plane, you have to recognize the fact that you like to be punished. The game plane? The game plane. The game plane. Yeah, if you're in the game plane and you keep accepting the game plane by whoever— and you keep and you keep playing it because you want to be around them. You have to accept the fact that you like being punished. Okay, <laughs> exactly. You like it. Thank you, ma'am. I have another. You like to be punished. You love it. You like the stiletto heel in your back. You're okay with that. Okay. And that's the thing is that are you liking to be punished? Is subconsciously do you feel like you deserve to be punished? Do you feel like you're not a good enough person? Is that why you chose this person? Do you feel like this is the only chance you have for a marriage or a relationship? Come on now, figure out the space you have in your life. Give yourself a little more credit than to have to just suck up with whatever you can get, okay? Life is life is good. You don't have to you don't have to lower your standards. You don't have to lower yourself to find love. There's a lot of love out there, okay? You just have to open your mind and realize that sometimes we actually create our own boundaries and our own problems that lead us 
into finding these romantic, these non-romantic vanquished relationships that are made out of narcissistic, self-loathing type people. So stay tuned. We're returning to talking about more of the reasons why we end up in these relationships and how to overcome it. Perspectives of your host, me, Ashley Burgess, will be back in, back in two shakes. Jake Busey, and you're listening to Perspectives with Ashley Burgess. Welcome back live to Perspectives, and I'm your host, Ashley Burgess. You know, tonight's show, we're talking about why it is that we find ourselves in romantic relationships with narcissistic people. You know, with people that are game players. We find ourselves playing these games, trying to catch up, trying to keep up, trying to find love. And a lot of times, you know, it's based on the fact that we just like the idea of a relationship. You know, we also sometimes sabotage ourselves subconsciously and find ourselves in the worst relationship because we're really not ready to settle down. Or we have these own roadblocks that we created because we believe that we deserve to be punished. That's always an interesting thing. And I think all of us here, especially here in the studio and everybody listening, has been in a position where you've been in a punishing relationship before. It wasn't there wasn't much in it for you, but to just get more and more punished and to stress out. But I think a lot of times when we like the punishment, we also like the game. And I know a lot of times people go, I don't like game players, but sometimes you do. There's a lot of people out there that say they don't like the game, but they do. They like the cat and mouse game. I I have a uh, particular ex-friend, and and again, this is a a shameless plug, uh, again, on previous episodes of Perspectives, uh, where I was friends with this guy for, uh, uh, you know, about a year, almost two years, and uh, it, it he had a bad breakup, but he he wouldn't let her go. He, he kept trying to reconcile the relationship, and she used that for all his worth. I mean, she played him, you know, like she was the cat and he was the prey. I mean, you know, she, she, she played played him up, did all sorts of mental things to him, and he'd just take it. You know? he, he liked being punished, but he liked the game. He likes the game. So sometimes you fall into maybe you don't like the game, but you start playing the game. And you don't really realize it's a game. Yeah. I mean, so you, you haven't been in a normal relationship in so long that you assume that this is the way it always is. And let me tell you this straight up on perspectives. You'll always get the authentic voice on that. This is not how it is. Game playing is not a part of a healthy relationship. Okay. To sit there and have some, to sit there and text somebody and they don't respond for four days is not a healthy relationship. One, you're not at the top of their list or two, they're playing a game. Okay. Try it again. You're either not at the top of their list, which you obviously can't be because they don't really care that much. And on top of that, they're playing a game. And if you have to play the game in order to get the attention, do you really want that? Is that something you want to do? Now, let's think about that on a long-term situation. Think about it. So you've been playing this game to get the next date, to get the next date, to get the next date. And eventually, this person now has feelings for you based on a game. So then you get married to this person. Now, do you constantly continue to play this game? Okay, because you're going to have to play one person or another to get that person to be jealous to stay in the relationship. Okay, and I've seen it all the time where you see people, they they play these games in social situations like a girl will hit on a guy and then the husband will come running over there and there's this whole argument and this blow up and it happens every single time they go out. Okay, because that's the way that they got. That's that's the way they came together. That's all they know. I mean, that's all yep. I know. And it's the same people that you walk into on the bathroom having sex and you go, oh, oh my bad. <laughs> and it was right after some big blowout. They're all fighting and everything. That's the, oh, the only the, way. The, the makeup sex. The makeup uh, sex. I, you know, that's something else I don't get too. Deliberately having a fight just to have makeup sex. Oh, and I know people that do that. Uh, you know, to, to me, that's if, if that's the basis of your relationship, mm. not much of a relationship. No, not at all. I mean, the sex has got to be really good. And, you know, you have to like... You know, dispel age and and the fact that it's the same sex he has. So you got to find something else that you like. Because I mean, to me, that's a couple who is uh, c- confusing love with lust. And also, you know what? They're confusing the game with love. There you go. Yeah. So if we're confusing the game with love, which a lot of people do, okay, and and I've confused it before. Because you get everything wrapped in in together. So for example, when you start wrapping sex and alcohol. Because I know most people listening to this show probably drink, okay? I'm not saying y'all are drug addicts, but I'm saying you probably drink. So if you wrap alcohol and sex together, and then you wrap, and then you also wrap a game in it, you're going to not realize what's really going on. And you're going to start loving things that you might not love, right? You're going to start equating love with things that aren't necessarily love. You're going to also start equating the game with the love, 
Okay, and I know people that do this all the time. They'll be in a relationship and they'll be like, well, but I, I, I don't hear from her for four or five days at a time. What do you think's going on? I mean, my first thought is, you know, she's cheating on you. <laughs> my first thought is right. there's something else going on. She's dating someone else those four days, you know. Um, but then the next thing I go is, you know, maybe they're not. Maybe this is all a game to lure you in even closer. If, if, if you want me more because I'm not around, hmm, maybe I just won't be around. Just like the, you know, the, the allure on the end of the hook. Oh, yeah. You know, just, just kind it's of touch a it. It's allure. Yes. It's a lure, yes. right? I, I'm going to get this allure out here. Uh-huh. And, and they, they could be sitting in their living room eating, you know, and haven't taken a shower in four days. You have no idea. Mm-hmm. They could be eating with stains all in their shirt and haven't left and just been doing work at home. That's why they haven't called you. They could be dating somebody else. They could be actually playing you to get you to get closer to them. Because maybe you might actually marry them if you seem to not be able to figure them out. Okay, well, I can't figure out the Rubik's Cube, so better than leaving it alone, I'm going to bring it closer into my life. I'm going to try to figure it out. I don't know if the snake is actually poisonous, but it hasn't bit me yet. Or uh, uh, I know one of the chambers in this gun is loaded, <laughs> so I'll just I'll just spin the barrel and uh, we'll see what comes out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, <laughs> man, I've been there before. I know, huh? Yeah, you, you like you. I know that this gun is loaded, but it's okay. You know, it's not going to hurt that bad. No, I'll aim it at my foot. I'll, I'll be careful. <laughs> It'll be okay. I'll aim it toward my foot, my knee. <laughs> don't worry about it. <laughs> Just don't put it toward your head. And I think a lot of times we see that game is love, and we we also have a tendency of doing something. And I know a lot of women can relate. I know a lot of y'all can relate tonight, is that we go for the people who are emotionally unavailable. Who are emotionally unavailable. How many people listening tonight have gone through the situation where they've dated someone who is absolutely emotionally unavailable? Seriously, straight up. And, and you know, was it because they only wanted the sex? Not always. Sometimes it's a mental game. You know, some relationships, the more power that person feels that they have over you, the more interested they are. I mean, I was one time years ago, you know, way before I got married, I was dating somebody that was a total game player. And I remember, like, they would push every button, and I didn't know why. Uh, probably just to push it, just to see see what reaction you get out of it. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and one night, I decided to just play along. And so we're at this restaurant, and the waiter comes over there and goes, you know, Okay, what do y'all want to eat and everything? And I ordered, and I made the comment. I said, by the way, I am allergic to a couple of things. And right before I said that, the person I'm with was like, oh, put extra this on there and extra that on there. And I'm like, dude, I mean, like, I go to the hospital on stuff like that. you know, like, don't do that. And they were, like, laughing. So after that, there was another comment that was made, and then another rude comment, then another comment. And it's like, and then I realized, oh, try this out and see if they're just trying to piss you off on purpose to try to get you <laughs> mad, to try to win something, okay? Yeah. And so that's when my acting skills came in. Okay. Ashley Burgess, renowned actress. And so as he kept making comments, I started, I was just like, visualizing myself getting madder and madder and madder and madder and madder and madder and I started getting mad. And, and I was, this is all acting, it was great. And I looked at him and was like, just shut up! And I'm in the wow. middle of the restaurant. I go, shut the heck up. I'm tired of this crap. Just out, out, out. Yeah. And, then, and the restaurant's packed. Like, like you can hear a pin drop now. Oh, and it's a five-star yeah. restaurant. Yeah. And we were right in the very middle. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. And I go, I'll be right back. I'm so angry. So I went to the bathroom. Just stomped off. I did. I did. I threw like my purse in the seat and I stomped off. Okay. And, and you know the the uh, uh, angry woman, you know, uh, walk, you know, head head up in the air. You oh, know, and heels, like, click, click, yeah, click, click, there click, you click. Go. And I, you know, I open the bathroom door and slam it behind me. You know what I mean? And then you know, because it's like a, a hallway that goes down. So then I went right. to the bathroom. And I, when the door closed in the bathroom, I just started laughing so hard. <laughs> I started laughing so hard, like I was uncontrollable laughing. I was like, ah. It was hilarious. Such a good job. I was like a, I was like an Academy Award, you know. And then so I ran to the restroom and I washed my hands and I, and I reset. And I knew when I came out of there, everybody's gonna be looking at me. I mean, I sure. know that. I mean, I had done an award winning. I mean, picks are perfect. And, and we, I bet you came out. You were just strutting. Oh my god! I walked out of there and you I moved my up. purse and I put it down and I got in the seat and I looked right at him. As angry as you could look. Yeah, just as angry as I could look. Staring daggers. And he's like. Are you okay? <laughs> just real meek like. Oh, and he was just okay? smiling from ear to ear like the Cheshire cat. Didn't mean to upset you. 
And I see him, and he literally has this grin. Oh, it's, oh, okay, okay. I'm sorry. So it's a genuine grin. It's, it's oh, not, he's happy. It's it's not a. Uh, he's got know. what he wants. Huh. He wanted me to be so angry that that's what he wanted to do. Is he wanted to see how angry he could get me, and then I realized like he is totally trying to push every button, and also he's using that as a power play. Okay, right. because for so long I would never get angry, and he would keep pushing. And after I did that little that little, here you go. I threw it out there. He never did it again. Which is funny, but he smiled like the Cheshire cat. He smelled like he smiled like the cat who had just eaten the rat. Like he finally got what he wanted. He he wanted to see how much it would take to push me. And he he found out. And he loved every and minute he of it. Didn't need to do it again. And that and when I saw that it was we went on a couple more dates and that's when I ended it. I was like, there's no way I could ever be in a relationship with this person full time, which their main goal in life is to push every button and make me angry. And because I'm not going to get angry. That's not what I want to do. That's not what I want to be. And I know people on a constant basis who the games go from the dating scene into the marriage and the games get way worse and the stakes get way higher and your happiness is at risk. Okay. If you're having to fight in the boardroom and uh, in your office for everything you have at work and then you turn around and have to go home and sit there and play a game every night to get somebody to love you, God, I'd rather much be single. I was going to say that uh, I, I can always tell at work uh, who has a happy home life and who doesn't. Oh, yeah. Because uh, some people, it's like, okay, you know what? I'm going to, uh, you know, like they will never take a day off from work. In fact, they will work overtime. Because they don't want to be at home. Because, yeah, I mean, they don't want to be at home. It's like, I want to be at work where I can get some peace and quiet. Yeah, because I got somebody nagging me or, 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 or bitching at me the whole yeah. time, right? I yeah. mean, it's constant. Right. And it's like, what do you do about that? And, and on, the same, on the same token, it's like if you're having to constantly play games with somebody to keep them interested, <laughs> Yeah, that doesn't last that long, you know, and eventually you resent the person for doing that. You resent having to be put in that position. But guess what? They didn't put you in that position. You did. You did. You put yourself in a position in a relationship that's not working. And you have to sit there and analyze why have I chosen a relationship with somebody that's vanquished of emotion or somebody that's narcissistic. Somebody likes to push all my buttons for a power play and for fun. Why did I choose this in the first place? So stay tuned. We're return. I'm going to give you some tips on how to begin to date or meet people that are genuine or at least be able to understand when you're around someone that's a complete game player and a waste of your time. Stay tuned because Perspectives with your host, me, Ashley Burgess, will be back in. We'll be back this time in two shakes. I can lift you up. I can show you what you want to see and take you away. Get in here and give us your perspective. We're listening. You're listening to Perspectives with Ashley Burgess. Welcome back live to Perspectives, and I'm your host, Ashley Burgess. You know, tonight we've been talking about how we find ourselves in these romantic relationships with narcissistic game-playing people. And so right now I want to give you the tips of things that you can do beginning right now to eliminate the wasting time with game players, to eliminate the waste of time of people that will take seven days to text you back and to realize when you're not in the actual position you need to be in. Drum roll, please. Yay! First off, what do you stand for? You have to ask yourself, what do you, what do I stand for? What do you stand for? What's important to you in life? What are your goals? What are your passions? What are your values? What do you value in life? And then you have to ask, what do they stand for? Do these things seem to be together or are they antithetical? Okay, that's your first line of defense. If you're with somebody that seems kind of slimy, if you're with somebody that seems a little like non-ethical, is that who you want to be around? Think about it. It's not going to get any better, and it's not going to change. And I don't care how big your boobs are, or I don't care how long your thing is, you're not going to be able to change that about somebody else. Or how big your bank account is. Yeah. If if they're unethical, they're always going to be unethical. Okay? If they're cheaters or they're game players, they're always going to be that to a degree. Okay? You can't change. If they're a bad boy, and they've always been a bad boy, you think you're going to tame them? Really? Like, you're, you're the goddess of all, and you're just going to tame him, and he's going to be like, okay, uh, sorry, I'm never going to look at another woman my whole life. Well, you know what? That's probably never going to happen, and then if that does happen, guess what? He's no longer the bad boy, and you're no longer interested. 
Hmm. Second thing that we can talk about is that are you authentic? Are you real? Because this is two ways here, guys. You could be the narcissist that we're talking about tonight. It might not just be the other person. Okay, so catch it. Are you real? Are you authentic? Are you a real person? Hmm. Think about it. Be honest with yourself. It's okay if you're fake about some stuff, but be honest and say, you know what? I'm not really real about this. And then you have to look at the other person. Are they authentic? Are they real? Do they stand for what I stand for? Are we authentically together? Or is one person fake and all about the way they look and about their perceptions or about other people's perception of them? Or do they actually value truth and they're authentically living their life? Good question. That's something else that would be a checklist and important when you meet somebody. Because the more you follow this checklist, the less time you waste. Because I, that's everything I hear in my office is I wasted so much time with her. I wasted so much time with him. If I could just get back those two years of the waste of time, my life would be okay. Well, you know what? You're never going to get back those years. They're not coming back to you. There's no, like, you know, year God that looks at you and goes, okay, Bill, you wasted those two years, and we're going to go on and accrue you back these two years, and you'll start again. Yeah, this is not the Matrix. They, they, they don't reset it for you. No, you're not getting the reset right. button. It's no, oh, game over. Oh, please play again. It's none of that, okay? You know, please play again. Get your yeah. head out of your butt. Life is not a Nintendo game. Yeah, get your head out of your butt, man. Are they authentic? <laughs> are you authentic? Does this gel? And, and just because if they're not authentic, you're not going to change them. They might eventually change and figure out themselves, but you personally will never change them, okay? And it certainly won't happen on the right time frame, okay? It might take years, and then even then, you're going to fall out of a certain sink, and you're going to waste your time. So are they authentic and real? Are you authentic and real? The next thing is that, do you feel that games are being played in this relationship? Hmm. Do I feel like games are being played? Because I think this is one where you don't even have to think about it a lot. Your gut will tell you. Oh, yeah. L- l- listen to your gut. Listen to that you know voice in the back of your head. And especially if you are not a game player and if you are an authentic person. Ooh, ooh, ooh. ooh. Bill's raising his Mr. hand. Mr. Cotter, Mr. Cotter, Mr. ooh, ooh. Mr. Cotter. I love that. <laughs> right. I like that. Yeah, are you a game player? But if you are not one, everybody listening, if you're not a game player, it can be sometimes hard to identify that if somebody is game playing you. But a lot of times, like Bill said, you'll feel it in your gut. The next thing, too, is that think about communication. Okay, and this is a big deal. When we communicate, when you communicate with your friends, and this goes for women in particular, more women than men. When you communicate with your friends and you text them, you text them, hey, what's up? What's going on? Let's get together, whatever. When you text a guy that you like, you get all weird. Okay, you get all weird and try to be all interesting and try to be all mysterious. If you can be honest and communicate in an authentic way and that person responds in an authentic way, you got something. If you communicate like you do with your friends in an authentic way, in a really authentic, true way, and they either don't respond or give you mysterious kind of like shady responses, you can accept the fact that you are dealing with a game player. At that point, you enter at your own risk. Okay, if you want to waste your time with a game player and try to outbeat the game player, good luck because they invented the game. You're never going to win. I mean, if I come up with a game tomorrow, an offshoot of spades and hearts with a little bit of risk and something else involved, and I look at Bill and go, this is the rules. And this is how you win. I'm always going to win the game because I can change the rules at any time. Okay, it's it's like getting mad at okay, it's like dealing with a mad person and they're angry and they're and they're yelling and they're screaming and you're not that kind of a person. But in order to get through to them, you got to yell and scream and get mad. Well, guess what? One, it's going to hurt you, and two, you're never going to win. You're not. The only way to deal with that is to be yourself and to calmly deal with it and walk on. Okay, that's it. But when you try to jump to their level or down to their level, you don't get really anywhere. Guess what? You get upset. You get angry, and again, you're foiled again. It doesn't work. You know, sorry, no, no play this game. It's not going to work for you. So if you're feeling the games are being played, they're being played. If you can't be authentic in communication, you got games being played. If you want to bring it up to their attention and say it and they still avoid it. Okay, games. So what are you going to do? You can either stick in this and deal with it. Or guess what? You can move forward and go find someone that's not playing with you all the time. Not trying to play with you. Because a lot of times those game playing is that. You know, it's all about cat and mouse. It's all about getting or seeking some sort of end game. 
It could be because they're dating other people and you happen to be a pawn that they are hanging out with. Yeah, you're you're, you're the, uh, uh, what do you call it, the trophy? You're the, well, yeah, or the side piece. So, yeah, the wingman. I love that side piece one. You <laughs> yeah. Know, the side piece. I, they got the wife and the mistress and the other mistress and the side piece. And this, I, I hear people talk about this stuff all the time. I go, really? Uh, here's a good one. You're an accessory. You're an ass- oh gosh, yeah. yeah. Like you're the, you're the Ken doll to the Barbie. You're like the ear of the accessory. <laughs> when I think of accessory, I feel like I think about a bracelet or a belt. You know what I mean? Right. Or a brooch. Uh, it's like, and there you go. And that's the thing is that you're only important when they're around. And you got to think about that too. Is that a lot of times we make excuses for people when they're game playing because we assume there's no way they're game playing. They must be really really busy. Or they must be out of town or whatever. And you know what's funny, though, is that when people play a lot of games, the only time that they're in there to call you or to communicate with you is when they want something from you. When they want something. And, you know, the more you run to the beck and call, the less self-value that you have for yourself and the less the less self-worth that they have for you. The less compassion as well as less respect. Because they know that when they come calling, you come running. And that to me is sad because that also puts you in a position of being powerless and that also puts you in a position that they realize they can use you at any time, any place, anywhere with no worth, with no work. I mean, when was the last time that you went on a date and it was a last minute deal where at 8 p.m. you get the call? You want to go out tonight? Uh, You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you're over there like, uh, and you like this person so much that you go on and do it, right? But what does that say about you? Like, what does that say about you? And, and then I know people that have come into my office and they agree to go out on a date. And an hour later, the guy still hasn't come out to show up to pick him up. And then they just blow him off. And there they were, like, just sitting there waiting. Well, why, are, why are you still even speaking to that person at that point? That's true. And they'll go back into it. Ugh. And they'll go back into it. And that's the key. They'll even have sex with that person. Ugh. Oh, it's bad. It's awful. It's just, and we, we all find ourselves in those situations. I'm not making judgment on everybody that's listening or anybody that's listening, but I'm saying identify that, self, that stuff within you and figure out why is it that you're playing into this person's game and why are you even allowing this? I mean, you're worth more than that, right? I mean, I even think you're worth more than that. So you got to start thinking about it yourself. Quit putting all these limitations on yourself and wake up and smell the coffee. There comes a time when you have to step up to the plate and say, I am a powerful man or I'm a powerful woman and I have the ability to get what I want in my life and I'm going to be happy and I'm going to create happiness. I'm not going to look for happiness outside of myself. I'm going to better myself. I'm going to power up myself. I'm going to make myself better and I'm going to make myself powerful. And if a relationship happens, great. But in the meantime, I'm I'm doing me. I'm doing me some me right now. And I think that's a lot of times when you get out of game playing relationships, the first thing you want to do is me some me. You don't want to get into another relationship because guess what? You're either going to bring that baggage to another relationship thinking that somebody's always playing games on you and that could have been the best woman or the best man you've ever met and you'll ruin that relationship because you'll ruin it because you're going to bring all that nasty baggage into that relationship and you're going to think that they're doing the same thing as that past you know, jerk was doing. Or, or bitch or whatever was doing, right? And you're going to think that stuff and that's going to happen. And you can't, and, and that's the thing is that you got to take some time off and you got to increase your power, see yourself, raise yourself up, spend some time with you. And as you get to know your authentic self, you will find other authentic people that you might have a relationship with or you might not, but they're not going to be game playing narcissistic people that get in your way and cause you havoc and pain. And last but not least, last but not least, You know, when you're not playing games and you're being authentic and you understand exactly what you want in a relationship, go get it. Even if it's not marriage, even if it's sex, if whatever you want in a relationship, it doesn't have to be like you want two kids out of this, you want to get married, you want to have a Volvo. Some people will be saying that is what they want. If that's what your end game is and that's what you want, great. But be clear with it. Be honest with it. Be honest in your head about it. Don't try to mince words about it. You don't have to come out and say you want kids and everything else, but you can say if somebody asks you what you want, I want a serious relationship. If you're not into it for a serious relationship, be honest. I mean, I think everybody has the option of getting what they want in this world as long as they're honest and authentic about it. And straight up, if you can do that, other people might not agree with you. They might say, hey, I'm not looking for that, or hey, I am looking for this, but it's not your level. 
Other people might go, hey, you know what? That's refreshing. But all in all, you will sort out the people that are not looking for what you want. Of course, now the key to that uh, is you have to be authentic with yourself first. Always. If you're not authentic with yourself and know what you want, you will constantly find yourself in not good situations. You'll find yourself in situations that you wish that you hadn't been in, and you'll look at it and go, man, I really wasted a lot of my life. And nobody likes regret. Okay, so in order to eliminate that regret, be authentic with you and figure out exactly what you consciously want out of a relationship and stop letting other people play you. We have a great show for you next. Stay tuned because Perspectives with your host, me, Ashley Burgess, will be back in. We'll be back in three shakes.